deep pulsing darkness filled my every crevice and fold, leading through the razor thin cracks. Drifting unevenly between a nauseating black sea and a stifling destitute vacuum. Obscurity murmured and bubbled beneath the heavy velvet pole. Competing vibrations through the void pounded and shook the air with a stiff, rich chord. The staccato hum echoed, threatening to break the eclipsing shadow. Echo? Echo? Ah! Okay, whose room is this now? <laughs> I'll probably Ashley because like she was adjacent to us, right? I'm still sauce of her, but we'll, we'll just take it as it is for now. I opened my eyes as a swift and sharp pain struck my face. Did I get slapped? Hey, what gives? Missy was standing over me, her hand poised in a way that suggested she was the one who had firmly woken me up. Sorry, but I had to wake you up. I shook you, but you didn't react, so... I blinked several times as I rubbed my left cheek, my vision adjusting to the surroundings. It seems I was either in Missy or Ashley's personal... Okay, why did we assume Ashley? I mean, I assumed Ashley, but that was before I knew Missy was here. I sat up in the bed to see Ashley, okay, sitting at the foot of the bed just in front of me. Missy was on my left in a spare chair. Okay. Ashley, Missy. What happened? Well, for starters, it's about 9.15pm. You seem to have passed out after the trial earlier this evening. Ashley and I were concerned, so we've been monitoring you to make sure you were safe. However, I was worried. You stopped breathing in your sleep. Stop breathing? I can't have you leaving us so shortly after we lost two of our other friends. I hope that your new found title of ultimate memory does not begin to fail you so soon. Ultimate memory. That's right. Yesterday, I thought I was an ordinary student with no extreme talents or skills. Yet, in the courtroom, a revelation came to light and I was given the unique title of Ultimate Memory. Whatever that entailed, I wasn't too thrilled. Because despite that revelation, it wasn't the strangest thing to occur. bit back my words and tears thinking about Pandora and art. The truth was hard to swallow. Throughout the trial, many of us struggled to find footing in the discussions. None of us wanted to believe any of it. Murder. Following it. Execution. Three of us sat in silence, haunted by the dark happenings of the courtroom. I looked solemnly at the other two. Missy and Ashley's faces told it all. A tapestry of remorse and distress. Well, what's important is that you're all right now, Echo. Yeah. Thanks, you two. I'm relieved. Ashley's voice was a whisper. First, the door trap, then this. We exchanged a few words, but we knew from emotion alone how heavy our hearts weighed. Missy breathed a tense sigh. Just the other day, Missy was so composed. But now, a voiceless iron curtain hung over us. There were so many things to address, but... Fear choked our dialogue. 
looked up to meet Ashley's tearful gaze. And looking just past her, I saw something bright sitting on a cabinet in the corner of her personal room. It was a helmet. Ash. What is it, Echo? That helmet over there. When we first met up, I remember you saying you didn't have any personal possessions, but... Ah. Yeah, I didn't mention it on the first day. I didn't want to talk about it. How much are you hiding from me, girl? Sorry, you don't have to... No. I think this should be brought up. Ashley's face sunk. She turned to face the cobalt blue item. I'm sure you can recall what I told you about the person this helmet belongs to. Or the race car driver. I nodded gently and Ashley sighed deeply. Missy was quiet, politely listening. Oh. I got in a fight with my friend. Another ultimate student. Silver Prowl. Race car driver. Fight was about the very preservation project we're involved with now. The project was but a low whisper among ultimate students. Word was that we would be offered state-of-the-art living and protection, seeing as our talents would be of great worldly benefit. As soon as I received my offer to join, I couldn't say no. I asked Silver if he had accepted as what he... But... Silver declined, wholly disagreeing with the offer vehemently. He doubted the validity of a private group that only existed in the hope for hearsay of strangers. What position was I to deny safety when it had been offered so graciously? With our differing opinions on the matter coming to a clash, he eventually gave up on me entirely. Yet, against his wishes, I made attempts to get his name in. Where are we are now? Ashley began to tear up and buried her head in her hands. I'm such an idiot! voice trembled. Ashley, you're not an idiot for caring about a friend's well-being. I... I was foolish for thinking the killing game would go away if I removed Echo from being involved in my troubles. Being involved with ultimate students only leads to ultimate levels of trouble. I was wrong for thinking I could shoulder tragedy on my own. Ashley looked at me with pleading eyes. Oh my god, there might be death flags. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I didn't read that. Ashley looked at me with pleading eyes. They were filled deep with sorrow and regret. I'm sorry, Echo. I realize now that it's more important than ever that we stick together. Grasped my hand firmly, but her own hands were shaking from fear. It was only natural. I felt a tear fall from my face onto the back of Ashley's hand. Missy's voice slipped in. Why don't we get something from the dining hall to unwind? Everyone seems rather tense, and I think taking a beat could help us de-stress. Huh? How could you think of getting a snack at a time like this? I heard my voice cry in desperation. Pandora and Ark's lives were just taken away! I'm sorry, and I don't think we're sound of mind right now. That's right! We shouldn't waste time doing nothing! Then what would you suggest we do? We need to escape! Missy, 
You're the ultimate tactician. I'm begging you. Come up with something. Anything. Any sort of thing to get us out of here. What's the point of ultimate talents if we can't do anything with them? Missy flinched. She looked away, attempting to hide her reaction. I realized what I had just said. I'm sorry. I went too far. <laughs> Echo, it's fine. However, Missy's words was betra betrayed her emotions. She must have felt tense after everything as well. But she tried to retain her composure nonetheless. I let out a deep sigh. I'm sorry for losing my temper. You're right. A snack could clear, help clear my head. Missy. Missy's expression eased, but she said nothing. Rather, she slowly got up and offered a hand for me. She helped me out of bed and we quietly made our way to the dining hall. Oh wow, the halls were eerily quiet, as if even sound were draped underneath the shadow of the evening lighting. the dining hall, we saw Forte sitting in his lonesome. Evening, Fox. Forte's voice was a lone mumble, his posture stone. He sat with his hands clasped on the table, resting just before the dining table centerpiece, Pandora's basket of pastries. Missy's idea to get a snack was quickly dashed when we met. We were met with the memento of Pandora. Stomach was twisted. Are you all right, Forte? The answer was plainly painted on his face. No one was of sound mind after what we just witnessed. Even though he didn't answer outright, the question alone gave him a bit of comfort. Indeed. It will be a while yet for me to come to terms proper, but... Toujours et us après une chute. Always... Après? I feel like I should know that word when I don't. One... Okay, yeah, and there will be a translation note later. Or are you going to translate it later? Yeah, probably later. Always rise after a fall. Yeah, okay, I'll play as after. I knew I should have known that. I see. Oh, parachute. Oh, okay. We're learning French today. <laughs> Give me a moment. Else? Sorry, I, I just really want to take it in. Okay. Always rise after a fall. Always rise. Pain exists so we can grow and learn from it. What we do with this feeling of misfortune is what will motivate us to move forward. We learn from tragedy, tra tragedy and grow forward. It's really all we can do. I must imagine art was deserted. Regardless his generous fixings, being driven into a companionless corner like that would make anyone miserable. And being here now with our friends Missy and Ashley, as well as the others, should teach us that we have friends all around us who would feel anguish without one another. Okay, but what about Lyle? I'm scared. Oh, he probably has death flags. Hmm. Alas, it's hard to think clearly when your mind has been clouded by despair. I feel terrible for Ad. His swirling, desolate emotions push too far. 
I wish to make it known that I care for you all deeply. You were loyal. Forte's melancholic voice stung my heart. Missy and Ashley themselves have a wistful look in their eyes as they nodded in assent. We hardly knew each other, but I could feel the bond of our adversity bringing us closer together. A camaraderie knit together by taut strings of fear. If I may, as a precaution, I suggest no one travel alone. It's too dangerous to be without a witness in the event something were to happen. It's not a thought I wish to entertain, but such steps may be necessary if we're going to be at the forefront of the Killing Game's unpredictability. I agree. Not only that. Cyrus's intense behavior could pose a potential problem. We're gonna tie him up. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I'm trying to lighten the mood. Um, what happened with Cyrus? What? Oh, shit. After the trial, you recall what Zero said, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Cyrus Cyrus is something to be wary of. Ultimate charisma is a terrible copper talent. After you collapsed, he started acting suspiciously. <laughs> this is why you should never have favorites in this game. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck? Seems I've garnered some distrust among you all, thanks to that lousy zero. <laughs> oh my god, stop! <laughs> this is not what I wanted when I said I'm hit spy. I'm so scared. Cyrus, what is Zero talking about? There's no use hiding it. I think a reintroduction is only appropriate. What? Cyrus Sirius, ultimate confidential informant for the preservation project. He's the ball? Oh shit. You're with the preservation project? Of course. I rallied you all here after with your ultimate charisma. Oh, shit, I fell for it. Damn it. So was with the facade. You're in this game too, after all. Did you think you couldn't keep up the niceties all the way through? That's for me to know. And all you need to know is this. You were all doomed from the moment you set foot here. I know for a fact. Nothing you do will save you from this game. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. And then he crept out of the courtroom, leaving us all confused to say the least. After that, Missy and I rushed you to my room so you could get your rest. Saiyan Kanon have been unresponsive all evening. I don't know how Lyle is faring, but he's likely in similarly despondent shape. They've retired to their rooms as far as I know. However, if anyone would like to explore, find a partner to keep yourself safe. I can't guarantee I cannot guarantee everyone's safety, nor can I force everyone to follow my lead. I hope you know I wish for everyone's safety. Missy was strained. She wished to protect everyone, but it was difficult since none of us knew what could happen next. I'm awfully curious about something, though. As we were returning to the foyer from the courtroom, I noticed there was a button for the third floor lit in the elevator. The third floor. I saw that too. Missy, did you want to investigate the third floor? It's nearly night time, I don't think you can. It's late, but I did want to make a brief round to see what's in store for us. I'll come with you. Echo, did you want to go back to your room for some proper rest? I imagine you've been quite fatigued lately. Uh, my stomach was in the knot. I didn't want to leave Ashley. No, it's fine. I'll come with you. 
I feel kind of restless anyway. Walking around could help. Okay, but don't push yourself, all right? I nodded slowly. <clears throat> if you folks are going to explore, would you mind seeing me off to my living quarters? Missy and Ashley obliged, and we all left the dining hall together. Oh. In the foyer, we saw Forte off as he retired for the night in his personal room. Entering the elevator again, we travelled to the third floor that had recently opened up. After a low rumbling, the elevator stopped, revealing the new area. Oh, okay. Sustained chapel kind of thing. A digital kiosk was just outside the elevator, displaying a map of the grounds as we approached. Alright. Um, yeah, more people. Fun. Uh, casino, garage, and the third floor of all places? Smokehouse lounge. What the fuck? Are we all... I mean, I don't know how old we're meant to be. <laughs> like, in the other games... Like, usually it's... Oh, we think we're teenagers, but it turns out years have actually passed. And like, all our my memories were wiped out within those years. But it might not be the case for this. This might not be a cheap memory trick. I don't know. Oh shit, I don't have any evidence. Art gallery. Hmm. I see. The third floor landing hall led toward a single main hall that split into four rooms, two on each side. Okay. Four new activity amenities are available to us. On the left there's a smoke lounge connected to a casino, and on the right is an art gallery connected to a garage. But of course, they're close to us from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. That's why I need to. I need to remember that. That's going to be important. 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. However, Missy's voice trailed off. I followed her gaze to the smaller hallways that surrounded the perimeter of the main activity rooms. Familiar doors dotted the hallway. An unknown school emblem decorated the door, but Missy's eyes were transfixed on what? Is it one of the emblems that we saw? Or is it- Or maybe there's like a repeat emblem? Like maybe there's someone else from my high school. Oh boy. Alright. Those are my ideas. What is it going to be? That's- And Ashley herself was looking at another door that bore a symbol, similar emblem on it that I've seen on the race car. Help. Silver's here. Is he? Huh? Uh oh! There was another set of personal rooms on the third floor. Missy and Ashley looked at each other with astonishment. I did not get a good look at that, but I'm guessing one of them was a race car. None of- I don't think either of them were, um, the announcers. Ooh. <laughs> Juicy. They swiftly ran to their respective doors, but before they could do anything- Oh, fuck. <laughs> I've seen you've met the rest of your classmates. Oh my god, stop this. I can't do this. I'm done. I'm quitting. Hold on a second. Wait, did- Oh, no, not that. Did the profiles change? Okay, no. That didn't change. Okay, interesting. Okay, so nothing's really changed, eh? Odd. Or whatever. Uh, we can't have nice things. We just can't have nice things. Oh, wait, how do I get out again? Okay, right click. His flat, disembodied voice sent a chill up my spine. The two of them swung around to see Cyrus in the dark corner of the hallway. Cyrus continued disregarding Missy and Ashley's screen faces. And we trusted you two. We were like, oh, we can take his word seriously. And we were like, oh, maybe he'll give me a talent. I don't know. Oh, damn it. It's too late. Silver, darling. 
they're out of the picture. Ashley and Missy reacted to the respective names. You know Dory. I remember Ashley telling me about Silver. So the other unknown was in relation to Missy. Oh shoot, I didn't clock that. The atmosphere was suddenly heavy with paralyzing glares sent every which way. Why do you know this? What exactly do you plan to do with these threats? <laughs> he shrugged indifferently, unconcerned with answering the questions tossed his way. Cyrus, who are you? I'm the Preservation Project's informant. I was chosen to handpick the class that appears for this game. His eyes, his leering eyes pierced the very air be between us. But Echo Pine, they're different. They're my bestie. <laughs> I was immobilized at the sudden mention of my name. I didn't even know if I was breathing. The three stood as a stalemate, a palpable dread radiating from their dead-locked eyes. Please, stop your facade. Facade? You all heard Zero in the trial. The Cyrus you knew before wasn't the real me. Oh no. He blew my cover. So here I am, in full form. Cyrus let his threat linger. The astringent potential for disaster mass and lead weight at the bottom of my stomach. Missy and Ashley closed on either side of me, bracing themselves against his possible machinations. Uh. But he just sulked away, Cyrus's husky low laugh melting into the darkness. <laughs> I was dizzy with fear, but Missy's firm voice kept me grounded. Hurry, let's return to the living quarters. She grabbed my hand, leading me through the dark toward the elevator that was some ways behind us. We hustled into the elevator and rode back to the main foyer. Back in the foyer, soft light from the chandelier glittered, delicately lighting the main hall. Then we crossed- Wow, we're meeting everybody, I was not expecting this. Then we crossed paths with Kanon, who was isolated in the foyer once again. Kanon? Ashley's voice was a whisper that didn't seem to reach Kanon's ears. We slowly approached her and saw her cold expression. But her face gave off a different demeanour somehow. Rather than the icy gaze, we were met with a stony, soulless stare. Conan, are you alright? I saw her come to, her eyes softening as she turned toward us. Mm. She murmured a quiet affirmation. The cold exterior melted into a brief moment of vulnerability. Then, my curious got the better of me and I capitalized on the brevity of silence. Come on, I have to know. Why did you run away when I collapsed from an electrocution? It's only natural to feel fear when you see someone get hurt. Huh? I was frightened. It's odd. I wanted to leave this mansion as soon as I woke up. Something stopped me. She gripped the instant camera she had hung on a short wrist strap. I work in my personal room with only this camera in my possession. I couldn't help but feel unnerved. Yeah, we don't have anything. What the? Everybody has something. What the hell this is? So I stood in the foyer, wanting to leave, but felt unable to due to a mysterious bad feeling. And as it turns out, that feeling was right. After I saw you scream and collapse, my suspicions were confirmed. But I didn't know what to do. I waited for someone, anyone to come and see you so they could handle it. Forte. 
you know what happens from there. I left someone else to help you because I didn't want to deal with that event. Though her face was no less intelligible than before, her voice was shaking. She was just as scared, if not more, than I was. She desperately wanted to protect herself from being the one who would point out the culprit as long as possible, knowing that she couldn't delay the inevitable revelation. Carlon sighed heavily. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm going to bed. Carlon briskly walked toward the living quarters. Missy and Ashley gave Carlon a soft goodnight each as she retired for the night. With nothing left to do in the dark of the night, we followed Sue to our individual rooms. Ashley stopped me for a moment in the living quarters hall. Echo, let's take care of each other, yeah? Of course. That doesn't need saying. I... There's something she can't tell us. I'm scared for her. I'm sus. I'm scared. I mm. Ashley mumbled something but caught herself off. Instead, she just gave me a hug. I closed my eyes and allowed myself to be swathed in the comfort of her embrace. Good night, Echo. Good night, Ash. Entering my personal room. I felt more alienated. This personal room. The comfort and luxury must have been fabricated, creating a false sense of comfort. Behind that sense of comfort, a facade of terror and malice was hiding. A killing game with no remorse for the participants. I shook the nerves out and collapsed on the bed. I want to go to bed for a long, long, long time. Exhaustion overcame me, and another day would come to pass. Every fire is a lesson learned. I opened my eyes at the sound of knocking. Hmm. Pardon me, but good morning. It's Missy Vesper, outside for Echo. I looked at the time, 7.29. Uh, good morning, Missy. I'll be right out. Take your time. I stopped the alarm before it rang and made myself presentable. So, I stepped out of my personal room to greet Missy. So we're halfway through the seven, the week. Hmm. I wonder if we're going to see day seven. Hmm. Uh, did I read this? Oh, never mind. I noticed she was clutching a small item folded in cloth. Before I could ask about it, she started through the halls and I followed alongside her. What's going on? I'm gathering students for a personal announcement. I will elaborate when we arrive in the foyer. She raised a small item, indicating it was going to be the subject of a meeting. You're the last student I approached. Those who won't be present did not answer when I knocked. However, when I approached Say, she replied through the door that she wasn't going to move at all. Oh no, not the deaf. I just said she was going to go for an art. Probably... We'll see. I'm sorry. She said that if she was going to die, it would happen regardless of what she did. What? It was a shocking, fatalistic thing to say. I wasn't going to force her out. Oh, that girl. Say worries me. Do you think she'll do something dangerous? I'm sorry, 
I meant that I worry for her well-being. I don't wish to be too demanding in any case she might be offended or take it the wrong way, but... <sighs> Missy sighed. She seemed upset that she couldn't do anything to help Say. I'm sure Say appreciates sentiment. We just do what we can, right? I apologize. You're absolutely correct. Mrs. Expression eased as we finally arrived in the main foyer. In the foyer, I saw the small group of students Missy gathered. The group was composed of Forte, Carnon, Ashley, Missy, and myself. Okay, who's missing? Say, Cyrus. Um, hold on. There's eight of us left. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's one person I'm missing. Um, oh, Lyle. Yeah, of course. So Lyle, Say, Cyrus, and Say couldn't make it. Two of them have death flags, and one of them is sus. <laughs> I'm not surprised Cyrus is absent given his behaviour last night. And Lyle should be a person of concern as well, since he was so distraught from the conclusion we came to. Discovering Art was the culprit behind Pandora's death. I just wanted to protect us. It's not his fault Pandora had an incredibly suspicious note. Ooh. Is that how you read that? I thought it was personal, like, not personal to Pandora, but like, he's overcome with such anguish about his talent that he just took it out on... It could have been anyone, maybe? Wait, no, he did acknowledge the note, my bad. Yeah, he did acknowledge it. He's the one who threw in the ball. Hmm. We'll see. I don't imagine seeing her with the note helped, what with his head being so full of distress. The note is fairly damning. I never would have thought she would she would be in possession of such an oddity. Oh well, she gone now. <laughs> but despite that, I feel like she had good intentions behind it. <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> she specifically pulled me aside the night before to ask if I knew anything about the contents. That doesn't seem like something a mole would do, right? <laughs> we pondered the source of the note, but we couldn't presume much about it without the strange item in our hands. And what? Well, sorry. Our morning was already off to a rocky start. Hmm. That brings me to what I have gathered you all here for. Missy had the floor, taking place facing the elevator at the centerpiece table, while the rest of us encircled the opposite side. Please, do not be alarmed when I show you this. She placed the small cloth-wrapped item she had been carrying on the wooden table. Ooh, it was a revolver with a note. Missy, what's the meaning of this? I told Echo before, but I'll reiterate for the rest of you as well. I had plans to contribute my skills to the preservation project prior to the events of arriving here. However, upon arrival in my personal room, I found this revolver. Read the note tied to the handle. Connor looked over and carefully read from afar. As a student interested in working with the preservation project, one must attempt their hand in a single round of reverse Russian roulette. As a student interested... Reverse... What the hell is reverse Russian roulette? Okay, wait. Russian roulette is when you load bullets... Oh. Honestly, my knowledge only came from another game, so... <laughs> you load some bullets, and then you shoot them... You're trying not to shoot 
kill anybody? I'm gonna have to research this, but maybe the game will explain, so we'll see. We believe every ultimate student should they be destined to live and change the world. Oh, well, that's out the window, isn't it? <laughs> we'll surpass the incredible game of chance, no matter the odds. Who the hell came up with it? <laughs> Reverse Russian roulette. Game of unbelievable chance. Five out of six chambers in the gun are occupied with a bullet. The player is to spin the chamber. Lock the chamber in. Place the gun barrel against their own head. Pull the trigger and hope to survive. Yeah, thank you for... That's normal Russian relay, isn't it? So reverse... What the f... Do you want to die or something? Without the knowledge of whether or not a bullet will be fired, your life is in the hands of fate. That's absurd! What are the possible odds of someone surviving that? You have no idea. <laughs> the odds are far too high to take a chance on. One would have to be inconceivably fortunate. Y you didn't play, right? They would dare risk such a gamble if they were not certain they would survive. Mrs. Jaw clenched. Did she really not play the round? That said, I'm showing my hand because I want to suspend my disbelief. Huh? I sincerely want to trust you all. So I hope you can trust me after all I've re after I've revealed this wretched thing. I wish for you to believe that no danger is to be contrived from me as I have no intention to harm any of you. She carefully folded... Where are you going to dispose of it? Carefully folded the cloth back over the revolver. Have any of you heard of a concept called the Stockdale Paradox? I can't say that I have. I'll explain. It's a philosophy of duality. Named after a vice presidential candidate, the Stockdale Paradox is a concept in which one must never lose faith that they will prevail in the end, while still confronting the cruel facts of their reality. It is a paradox of the self. An individual has to be able to balance the horrors of reality with the optimism of success to truly be able to overcome the worst situations. This mindset, the acknowledgement of two opposing sides, is paramount to achieving one's goals. One mustn't get so hopeful that they ignore the gravity of their grave surroundings. In our case, we must balance the hope that we will escape the clutches of this place against the despair of an ultimate death within the walls. Four of us were petrified. Hope? Despair? Oh, it was hard to process. Thank you for placing your trust in us, Missy. We will not let you down. Kano remained silent but nodded in agreement at Forte's statement. Thanks, Missy. You're risking a lot, but if none of us plan to kill, then there really shouldn't be anything to worry about. Of course there shouldn't be anything to worry about. We're all reasonable people, but fear is a powerful tool. By showing you this item and telling you my intentions, I hope to dispel any fear among us. I see. Thank you for your cooperation and understanding. I couldn't believe how bold Missy was being. She could have easily left the gun in her room, out of sight, essentially out of our realm of existence, and no one else could cause harm with it. She was venturing with high hopes that our group truly had no ill will. And everyone agreed. No one would dare fire the gun. Even so, in a game of killing, a weapon presented itself seemingly out of nowhere. Stranger so, it seemed like some students were left some sort of item in their rooms upon waking up. 
except me. What the fuck? First, Carnal remarking upon her camera. Then Ashley having Silver's racing ha helmet. And finally, Missy with a revolver. Oh my god. I also recall Forte having something that was seemingly... Oh shit, I didn't... Oh, music sheets! Music sheets. Yes! That's right! He was leafing through some sheet music. I thought he found it in the theater, so I didn't think much of it, but... Mmm, now that this has come to my ear... I wonder... What was the meaning of this? Oh, uh, hello? Whoa, what? As I pondered this strange trend, the sound of glass shattering filled the room. Are you sure that's glass? Oh, I don't know. Well, we're probably going to see it for ourselves. A group glanced at each other for a moment before running off to the source of the sound. What was this? Scuffle? Oh, I'm exciting. I mean... Uh, on my end, but probably not the character's end. <laughs> Through the dining hall and into the kitchen, the sound persisted louder and louder. There we found Lyle and the kitchen itself in a state of disarray. Broken glass and battered metal littered the floor as Lyle clutched a metal pipe aiming for the oven. Lyle, what on earth are you doing? Have you lost your mind? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm testing the rules. Oh, that's right. The rules state that we are not to damage major assets. Yet here I am, breaking everything. And so far, nothing has happened. The death flags. Uh oh, bye. Don't you understand? The rules aren't enforced. I wouldn't have to. Wouldn't have had to kill Pandora. He wouldn't have had to die by our vote. He's gone, mate. I'm sorry. The circumstance of a game falls a place to create restriction, and yet, arbiter or custodian or mastermind here to punish us for breaking the rules. So why should we be following the rules in the first place? Thought our lives were threatened since we got we were trapped by that electrocuting door. Did that even actually happen? You disabled it, didn't you? I mean, I guess it will still lock somehow. What do you mean? Of course that happened. Why would I lie about something like that? You were the only one who was affected by it. For all I know, Echo, you're the mastermind behind this. What? You collapsed and Forte, in his good nature heart, came running to your aid. That collapse could have been entirely fake. Because of that, we were simply trapped by our own fears. Be that does it mean, the fact remains that the door was armed and is currently barricaded. There can be no reason for that. Despite Forte's observation, Lyle ignored him. He was completely absorbed in his thoughts. I guess no one else touched it but us. I didn't have to die. I have to die. He didn't have to die. He didn't have to die. Muttering to himself as his grip. Oh my god, he was so attached to him. Him, poor thing. I'm so sorry, dude. Oh my god, the bromance was real. Eyes, his eyes gleamed with intent. His enraged eyes locked onto mine as he dropped the pipe, the metal crushing the glass debris into dust. I'm not going to die. Not after him! Is it? I think it's 9am now, right? 
with impeccable timing and announcement rang through the halls. Alright, it is now 9am and welcome to day 4 of 7. We're halfway boys. We're already halfway through. How exciting. However, there are far too many people alive right now and we need to fix that. I want to see some blood. Today's fourth motive question is, oh not again. Do you believe your talent can benefit all of humanity? Yes, as ultimate students at the top of your field, society will expect you to contribute yourselves and respective talents to the world as a whole. Ponder this question as we set up our next motive for you all. Coming soon to ultimate students everywhere. I listened to the announcement best I could, but the rest of the group paid no attention. Instead, they were trying to calm Lyle after his spiel. Lyle, we want to leave too, believe me. But we should put our heads together and come up with a plan instead of wrecking everything. No, you only get in my way. Lyle aggressively pushed his way through us, leaving the dining hall for the foyer with Missy giving chase. Oh, we're seeing pink. Lyle, stop it. Stop following me. I alone will piece together the secrets of this awful killing game if I'm not the ultimate puzzle master. Cyrus was right. If I don't act now, nothing will get done. You spoke to Cyrus. I ran into him this morning in the kitchen. He, he doesn't concern me in the slightest. With how Cyrus is behaving now, there's no telling what will happen next. You really ought to be careful around him. <laughs> I ignored Missy's plea and marched over to the elevator, slamming the buttons. He turned around and held, uh, held up a fist with a crumpled piece of paper in it. I swear I will find the other person who knows the secret of this note. <laughs> it's the only clue I've left me and damn it I will do whatever it takes to get to the bottom of this. Lyle gave us one parting glare before entering the elevator. Wasn't I wet? If that's... What? Up. The elevator doors closed, leaving the rest of us in a state of bewilderment. Lyle on edge as it is. A talk with Cyrus sounds like a recipe for disaster. What do you suppose he's going to do right now? Can only surmise Lyle might be going to the third floor to scour the area for the other students. It's a new location that needs to be turned over after all. Forte and Missy sighed in unison. Let us hope he doesn't do anything reckless. But just after Forte said that, I heard footsteps at the top of the stairs. Cyrus. Mm -hmm. Cyrus replied in a nonchalant manner, but his face was different. In the light of day, Cyrus's expression was twisted into something disconcerting. Missy and Cyrus exchanged fierce looks once more. Only this time, the two of their emotions were catalyzed. Before we could react, Missy moved swiftly to pursue Cyrus at the top of the stairs. Missy, wait! What are you doing? Ashley went to chase after her, but Missy's firm voice stopped Ashley in her tracks. Don't worry. I'm confident nothing will happen here. I'd like a word with this informant. She announced her vague plan as she arrived at the top of the stairs and forcefully grabbed Cyrus by the arm. Cyrus didn't say a word. Rather... He just made a disgusted face as Missy punched, pushed him into the jazz club. She slammed the door and silence befell the group. Uh, should we be concerned? Missy has a plan. I have faith she will carry out and do her execution with the least casualties. Yeah, Miss Ultimate Tactician probably has some cards up her sleeve. Let's just leave her be. Conron made a rather snide remark, but that said, it seemed like everyone was confident that Missy had a plan, seeing as no one went to pursue her. 
Oh, I hate it in here. Why don't we carry out the investigation ourselves? Investigation of what? We didn't see the other rooms. A mansion. We still haven't found a way out of this place. I agree. The third floor opened up to us last night, so there could be an opportunity for escape. Gono, would you like to join me? Missy proposed traveling in pairs to protect ourselves, so if I may... Sure. With a certain reply, Kano briskly began escalating the foyer stairs. Okay, she's opening up a bit. Interesting. We love to see it. Sorry, give me a moment. Yeah. Well, excuse us. Forte followed suit, which left me and Ashley in the foyer. Oh. <laughs> we should check out the third floor again. Not that the amenities are open. I want to see the personal rooms again, but whatever. Hopefully we'll find those other students. Hmm. Her voice was low. Ashley was pale with worry. There were signs of a friend Silver being here as well. The helmet and his personal room on the third floor. But the fact that we hadn't run into anyone for three days was cause for concern. I didn't want to say anything though. Ash, I'm sure we'll find Silver and the others. Ashley's eyes softened. Thanks, Echo. She gave me a soft smile once more before starting toward the stairs. I began to follow, but something was tugging at me. Hey, Ash. Should we... Should we take the gun? Ashley hesitated. I think we should trust Missy. We should trust everyone. It's ridiculous, though. I mean, trust? Such a lofty, intangible concept. You could say whether or not someone will uphold it. Echo, are you saying you won't? <laughs> of course not. It's just... That's that. Huh. Missy wants to believe in us. I'm guessing from our observed behaviour during the trial last night, she has no reason to believe any of us are malicious. In fact, the one person she thinks is most dangerous is Cyrus, and she's dealing with him personally. She placed her trust in us. Now we just have to trust her. It's a give or take. I see. Trust. I pondered the concept as we made our way through toward the third floor. Let's see where trust leads us. Upon arriving at the third floor, Ashley and I saw Kanon and Forte just entering the garage. Ashley invited us. Ashley herself revisited the door with Silver's school emblem and tugged at the doorknob. Locked. Figures, you, know, you can only open with. Maybe someone has Silver's bracelet. It... She knocks lightly a couple of times, but to no avail. Her eyes were dark. Uh, hey, maybe those other students are just gathered somewhere else in the building. It's a pretty big place. This whole floor was hidden from us for a while, after all. Ashley snapped out of a trance. The concerned gaze met mine. Yeah, we'll see them soon enough. She lightly caressed the door before returning to my side. Well, let's see if we can't find anything on this floor. Kanon and Forte just went to the garage, so why don't we check out the other rooms in the meantime? What? Okay, let's see what mm, the smoke lounge is. We entered the smoke lounge, a large room with a rustic design. Among the room pairs, this room was connected to the casino by a set of double doors on its right wall. Immediately upon entering, we were met with a heavy, ashy odour. 
I covered my nose to block the smell, but the air itself felt thick and suffocating. Go, are you okay? Fine. I just wasn't expecting the air to be so dry. Let's try to make this quick. Who would allow students access to a smoke lounge? That seems irresponsible. What kind of ultimate talent could utilize this room anyway? Who knows? Just take a quick look for some sort of exit and move on. I glanced over the room from one end to the other with a single sweeping look. It was a decadent looking set. The leather seating and fine woodcraft tables were cosy, each table housing a small candle for a comforting effect. The far wall had shelves upon shelves of fine beverages locked behind a glass case with a bar to match on the opposite side. It was a highly refined atmosphere overall that felt rather unwelcoming to those of us who didn't indulge in this sort of recreation. I poked around in the areas as I, I thought might be suspicious, but didn't really know what to look for. Ashley seemed to be out of sorts. I wanted to talk and take her mind off her worries for a little bit. So, I suppose I did have an ultimate talent after all. What do you suppose I'm meant to do with it? Vague much? It helped during the trial. Uh, that aside, I'm not even sure what kind of practical uses it has. Ashley felt quiet, instead focusing her attention on investigating the room at hand. At a loss, we decided to move on. Let's visit the casino. We visited the casino, a dim room with an expensive design. Among the room peers, this room was connected to the smoke lounge by a set of double doors on its left wall. Casino? I suppose it pairs well with the smoke lounge. I guess some kind of uh, ultimate gambler would thrive here, but still. This, along with the smoke lounge, seems a bit out of our depth. We're not here for the recreation. Let's see what we can find. We split up and searched between the rows of salt machines that lined one side of the room and the card tables that occupied the opposite. The salt machines spun listlessly as they stand idly by. The cards themselves look rather lonely. No chips or cards adorn the felt. I paced through the room twice over, but didn't spot anything of note. I wanted to try again. I'll probably have some trick to memorizing different puzzle block patterns. I, I could ask him, right? <laughs> I think there's usually some kind of math involved, so there's that. Uh, hmm. Nothing. Finding nothing fruitful of note, we move to our next location. Let's visit the art gallery. Ooh. Crossing the third floor hall, we came upon the spacious art gallery. Among the room pairs, this room was connected to the garage by a set of double doors on its right wall. It's very picturesque and modern. Yeah, the whole environment is really inviting. Could some sort of kind of exit or clue really be hidden in a place like this though? I guess we'll find out. The art gallery was situated in a warehouse styled room. The high open ceilings adorned with bright lights gave way to several painted canvases that decorated the walls. Large colorful work tables were lined up to the center facing a small stage that held a sculpture up for the artist to see. Off to the side was an ins inset closet stocked with shelves chock full of supplies. We kept coming up short in our investigation, shuffling the lengths of the rooms in silence. I stopped peppering Ashley with questions pertaining to my talent. She clearly wasn't in any mood to address it. Uh, echo. Ashley sighed. 
This whole ultimate debacle. Such a thing has no bearing on what we have. You don't need to find any sort of use for the talent. I couldn't tell you what an ultimate jockey could do for the future. Acknowledging the question, are we? Was it too much to simply wish for safety? That in return we must contribute everything in our power to get something so basic? I wish the project wasn't so incessantly utilitarian about our talents. Another heavy sigh. Pandora said something like that on the third day in response to the forced motive question. That baking was simply her passion. Sorry, the talent assignment was so weird and out of nowhere. To be honest, I'm not even sure I believe it. I just wanted to talk to take your mind off. I let the scent entertain. I didn't know where to go from there. Thanks, Echo. We kept looking. The three rooms we visited were stocked with a decadent supply of recreation, but the fact that we couldn't find an exit nor any signs of life were cause for concern. Our entrapment felt more and more isolating with each discovery. There's one more room to check. I wonder if Kanon and Forte have finished their investigation. No reason not to join them if they haven't. Ashley and I entered the garage through its heavy double door. Ah, Silver! There weren't any signs of Forte and Kanon in the room. What? The garage was another warehouse sized room that housed a large collection of vehicles. How the hell did you get all these cars in here? Okay, whatever. Vehicles of. I mean, I guess if you built them here, then whatever. So weird. Vehicles of various makes and models lined the warehouse like a row of soldiers. The last of each steel body gleamed proudly under the beams of display lights. A car collection. Hmm. Hmm. I turned around to see Ashley shaking. Is this a joke? Is there a body? Ash? This is some kind of sick joke, isn't it? I went to Ashley's side, but was shrugged away as she stumbled toward a cobalt blue race car. Oh, it's his car. She laid her hands on the hood of the car and stared at a hole through the windshield. This is Silver's car. The look on her face was filled with mixed emotions. Oh my god, is driving going to be important? We can drive. Say can't. Mm, we'll see. <coughs> Don't. Oh no. I gripped her shoulders firmly and shook her out of her daze. Ah, snap out of it! Ashley blinked and took a step back, but her head was hanging low. I can't. This is a sign. It can't simply be a coincidence, can it? Her voice trailed off. It seems we came to the same conclusion. It was entirely possible that Silver was also captured, made to play a killing game. But she would never want to hear that. Ash. Ashley. All these signs must be set up to get a rise out of you. Huh? Think about it. The mysterious group infiltrated the preservation project and kidnapped us. They must have known about your fight with Silver and are using it against you. Using it to vex you, to motivate you into doing something horrible. They're playing mind games with you, Ashley. 
don't have to worry about Silva. I told her these things, but they were all a lie. Even so, I couldn't stand to see her in such despair. Ashley rubbed her eyes and I saw her body relax. Yeah, you could be right. She sniffled out a voice of gratitude. Thanks, Echo. What are friends for? I gave her a small hug. Um, I'm going to step out into the hall for a bit, if you want to keep looking. Uh, Alright, I won't be long then. I let Ashley gather her bearings outside as I gave the garage a brief walkthrough. Where the hell are the other two? And surprisingly, I found nothing. I left the garage, disgruntled at the lack of clues for escape. Out in the main hall, I spotted Ashley in the midst of conversation with Missy. Okay. Echo, you might want to hear this. Well, what is it? As you know, I had a conversation with Cyrus. Yeah, that was kind of scary. But I'm glad to see you're alright. Worry not. I'm here in one piece. I wanted to bring to your attention his strange behaviour. You see, I tried to reason with him, to talk to him from one person to another. But it's almost as if after he was exposed, he's been building on a facade. I'm sorry, it's difficult for me to explain this gut feeling I have about him. I have my suspicions. Zero said ultimate charisma wasn't the real Cyrus, but could it be the other way around? The other way around? What do you mean? I was thinking, when Zero uncovered Cyrus's false talent, revealing his true title, Cyrus's behavior became stilted and insincere. Perhaps charisma truly isn't his talent, but his behavior under that title seemed organic. I mean, the sparkles. You can't fake the sparkles. What, are you just going to throw confetti on yourself and call it a day? Come on now. My apologies. I was just thinking out loud. Although, to see for myself, I wanted to talk some sense into him, but he remained steadfast and stubbornly absent. If he continues to behave strangely, we might have another tragedy on our hands. I agree. I didn't want to be too hasty, but might I suggest we try to extract information from him with force? I thought that was what you were doing. With force? Well, bonk him on the head or something. Uh, Missy's expression sharpened as she made a definitive decision. I could see her eyes glazing through a plan of action. Alright, ultimate tactician, what do you got? I will use the gun to threaten him into talking. Just threaten. Just threaten. Please. N n no violence now. Uh, I, I don't want to have to see your execution. <laughs> Whatever that may be, I actually don't know. I, I hope I don't see anything. <laughs> Make no mistake. I have absolutely no intention of firing it. But Cyrus doesn't need to know that. Yeah, exactly. Although, someone's monitoring us. Let's say it's not him. I, I mean, I don't know how, but... Um... In that case, let me help you. I'll get rope from the climbing centre to bind him in case he thinks of doing something funny. Oh yeah, tie him up. We're tying him up. Excellent. Brilliant. Alright, I was shocked, but Ashley and Missy were both in agreement. Alright, Missy, new best girl, what's good? <laughs> Ashley, quickly, let's make preparations and rendezvous here, rendezvous here promptly. What am I going to do? We mustn't waste any time with Cyrus roaming around freely. Actually not. Oh yeah, where is he right now? Whoa, it's all happening so fast. The three of us sped down the stairs and split up at the second floor landing. Missy continued further down. Ashley and I took a sharp turn toward the climbing center. 
I was struggling to keep up, but it eventually closed the distance between us as she dug through the lockers in search of rope. Isn't this too extreme? Look, it sounds harsh, but it's necessary to prevent further killing. I don't know, mate. The last thing I would want is to do not keep an eye on Cyrus and have you killed Echo. Not a single soul was exempt from death. There's no grey area about it. I understand that, but... She keeps saying there's no grey area about murder, but like... She didn't say anything about art, did she? Sorry, I'm thinking about like a character from the fan game. And, like they were pretty black and white about murder, so I was like, I was kind of thinking Ashley could be the same, but she seems a lot more. I mean, she's still on edge, but like a lot more put together than that other character from the fan game. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> I understand that, but ah, shit. Who died? Missy? Before I could finish my thought, a shot was heard ringing through the air. Oh shit. Who is it? Oh my god, not- It's so quick! It's only been a day! It came from above. Damn it. Missy, she must have encountered Cyrus before- Oh my god. Is this self-defense? Did she get, like- Oh, okay, sorry. I'm just- Ashley wrapped a bundle of rope around her forearm, grabbed my hand once more and darted up the stairs toward the third floor. Oh my gosh. She stopped me at the foot of the stairs and cautiously looked around the corner at the main hallway. Okay, I think reverse Russian roulette's involved. But like, I'm gonna need someone to explain that to me. Because <laughs> I'm like, so much is happening. Kill me now. <laughs> Wait, don't. <laughs> the sound of another shot exploded through the air. It sounded like it came from the smoke lounge. Yeah. Okay, we still haven't found Carnon and Forte. What's going on there? What is going on indeed? Before I realized what was happening, I felt my body... Didn't we say smoke lounge? Why are we here? Ashley had thrown the art gallery doors open and forced me in. Uh. Ashley, what on earth are you doing? She slammed the doors between us as I stumbled in. Echo, take cover here and don't move a muscle until I get back. Oh, you're gonna. <laughs> Are you gonna get back? Concerned. She commanded me from the other side of the door as I tried to steady my footing. In my state of dishevelment, I, I stayed poor, not knowing what else to do. I heard her footsteps soften as she put furthering distance between us. <laughs> Missy? Oh my god. So many dummy bullets. Wait, what? I was shaking. I hurtled toward the door. I couldn't help but fear the worst. Attempting to pry the doors open. Oh, what if we get shot? <laughs> we wouldn't die in chapter two. Come on now. Oh, did the vase break? The doors wouldn't but How did you lock it? The fuck? Under close, upon close inspection, the doors had no keyhole or latch that would keep them locked. Did someone die right in front of me and like their bodies in the way? Ew. Locked? How? I looked around hastily for something to help me get out. Oh yeah, the garage is connected to the- Oh yeah, I can leave through the- Oh, handy. Oh, that's gonna be important. <laughs> I ran to the double doors that led to the garage and tugged. Oh my god, the doors were similarly blocked. What the fuck is this? I'm trapped. Ashley! Looking again, these double doors have nothing preventing them from being open. Somehow, both sets of double doors have been blocked. I'm rude. No way. How could this be happening? I gasped, collapsing to the ground at the inexplicable situation I found myself in. Missy! It's possible. Missy was out there with a gun. This is a lot to be happening in a day, what the fuck? <laughs> Confronting Ashley. Where's Cyrus and all this? I felt a cold sweat. Oh my god, I... You see, you asked us to trust you! I couldn't believe how stupid I was for believing in trust! I should've... I don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know. Picked up the gun when it was in the foyer! 
fast. <laughs> footsteps. I heard footsteps from the main hall outside, main hall side of the doors. Why, oh, you must be a raving madman if you can run around the building alone. I'm not doing anything suspicious. I'm doing everything I can to get us out of here, unlike the rest of you. Oh. What were you doing poking around in one of the third floor personal rooms anyway? How did you even get in there? What? Someone has someone's bracelet, what the hell? Or someone's lying about their identity. That is none of your business. Okay, can you tell whose voices are whose? Echo? Voices? I heard faint voices from the main hall side of the art gallery. I sprung up from the floor and banged on the door from inside the art gallery. Hey, whoever's out there, let me out! Let me out! I hammered on the door until my fist fell through the air. Oh. Echo! Say was a. Why do you have the <laughs> Say was on the other side of the door holding a bundle of work. This is only chapter two. I don't know how many chapters there are, but if this is chapter two, I can't. I don't know how I'm going to process the other whatever there is. There's no time to explain. I was falling all over myself, running toward the sound of the shots. Oh my god, we're gonna... Everything was a blur as I darted across the hall to the smoke lounge and through the door open. Oh shit! Oh, now we can't get answers! Oh, again. Cyrus's body was lying face up, blood staining his torso and hands. Oh, let me see. Oof, dude. Ah, yep, this bracelet's neon pink. He's a goner. Oh, shoot. I mean, yeah, well, when you bring a suspicious character, they're probably going to get all... Mm. Okay, a lot happened. I should have... Mm. A lot happened, indeed. Oh, I sharply inhaled and trembled at the sight. <laughs> Say shook out a small startled response before disappearing from the smoke lounge entirely. I stood rooted in place, fear and confusion paralyzing me. The smoke lounge was in a complete state of chaos with Cyrus's bloody body drawing my gaze. Furniture was strewn about, glass cabinets were shattered, fabric sprinkled the messy floor. My head stung, the miasma of alcohol rushed through my senses. Mixing with the thick odour of smoke and metallic scent of blood created an awful nausea-inducing headache. The double doors that connected to the smoke lounge and to the casino was ajar. A morbid curiosity took hold. I cautiously approached this opening. I pushed slowly and... Oh, what? Double murder? Fuck off! It's in my chapter two! In my chapter two! Oh, is she unconscious? Wait, I can't see her bracelet. Someone took off with her bracelet. It was on her right hand. It's not... I don't see a chain. Ashley's body was strewn on the floor, blood staining her hands. So we can't tell if she's dead or not, right? Oh my god. All my instincts escaped me and my mind went completely blank. White noise filled my thoughts. I crumbled to the floor beside her. My hands wouldn't go anywhere near Ashley's body. Sam intruded my gaze. Ah, uh, Kanon and Forte closed in on Ashley's body and were voicing the concern. I heard nothing. My senses were scrambled. The only thing I heard about the murmur of their voices was... The eerie chime indicating 
A body has been discovered in the smoke lounge. Okay, so he, yeah, right. His his bracelet was pink. You will be granted a period of investigation, and then we will begin our class trial. Please accept this generous gift of a special report called the Monokuma file. It will be printed from the digital kiosk, and it outlines the details of a poor lost friend. Your lives depend on solving this case, so get a crack on. <laughs> I could feel my whole body shaking. I couldn't take my eyes off of Ashley's body. The body discovery announcement, and Ashley's body. Okay, okay. Um. <sighs> did, did that mean? I heard footsteps approach from behind. Missy crashed down beside me and rested her hand on my back, lightly shaking me. Echo, echo. I couldn't respond. I just sat on the floor, staring. Missy reached past me toward Ashley's body. Missy, could it be? Can someone please check for a pulse? We can't tell if she she doesn't have a bracelet. Life moved in slow motion as I tried to connect what I heard outside to the gallery to the horrible scene at hand. Missy carefully moved Ashley's hair and gently placed two fingers on the side of her neck. Missy, don't you dare touch her! She's alive. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're good. We're good. I knew it. Okay, cool. No double murder in my chapter two. Cool. She's alive. Sure. My head was pumping and I felt new life breathe into me as I processed the revelation. Okay. Look, her, her bracelet isn't a neon pink. There is a bracelet. I didn't see it drawn on. Oh. Her pulse is extremely weak, but Ashley is alive nonetheless. Isn't there an infirmary somewhere? She needs attention, quickly! I'll check the casino kiosk for a map. Connor swiftly left as the rest of us gazed in astonishment. My stare remained on Ashley's bracelet. Missy was right. It remained the same light rose gold color as mine. Unlike when Pandora's turned neon pink. Even if that were the case, what was wrong with her? I searched for an infirmary on the kiosk, but it only displays the falls that we've been to. Then, does that mean there isn't one? No, there is an infirmary, but... Uh, the infirmary is connected to the courtroom. Oh, okay, we're just going... My body kicked into action as I sprinted out of the casino toward the third floor elevator and slammed the buttons. Echo! I need to get her out of here! Take me to the courtroom! I shouted at nothing as the elevator doors refused to open. I continued to hit the buttons fruitlessly. Echo, please! I know it can be difficult, but it seems we must investigate in order to gain access to the courtroom. Missy had followed me all the way out here. We wouldn't want to enter the trial without preparing ourselves. Therefore, we must work quickly if we're going to bring Ashley back. Please. Slam my forehead against the elevator door in defeat. Damn it! Ashley. I let on an immense heavy sigh. My chest heaved, and I felt my breath escape in shaky, broken pieces. Do whatever it takes. I dragged my feet as Missy and I made our way to the crime scene. I'm doing this again. This horrible, horrible thing. It hasn't even been a day. Searching for the culprit behind the sickening scene, only to put them on the chopping block for the game to continue anew afterwards. This cycle was torturous. Ah! Despite that, Ashley was alive. 
I tried to clear my head. Yes, Ashley was barely hanging by a thread of life. But she was alive regardless. I need to figure out who did this. Someone took Cyrus's life and threatened Ashley's. No grey area about it. Taking our words, are we?